If you've been looking for a very portable, lightweight, powerful, portable power station, then this might be the solution for you. This is the AC60 from Bluetti. Now, what's really cool about it is two things in particular. One, it just uses a normal C14, C13 adapter plug right here, which means you can use a simple cable like this to recharge it, and it has fast built-in wall charging. But in addition to that, on this side, it actually has two spots to add two expansion batteries, unless it have a really impressive battery capacity for such a small unit. You may be asking, why would I take a small unit and add extra batteries rather than just getting a bigger unit? And oftentimes a unit like this will work really, really well as a UPS, meaning an uninterrupted power supply. So for example, if this were to run a sump pump in a basement to make sure that if there's a bunch of water outside or maybe a backed up pipe or something like that inside, that the pump in the basement is going to get all of that water out of the house. Because if you have a power failure and you're not able to get that water out of your basement, then you're gonna have some serious flooding issues. So that, and for many other reasons, this AC60 looks like a very good unit. And we're gonna take a look at it and see how well it really does charging from the wall, from solar, battery expandability, all of that in this video. Now the most unique thing to the AC60 is its battery expandability. I don't know of any other small power station like this that has the ability to add more batteries to it. It's really cool that they added that as a feature to this unit. Now it does have a big bright light on the back here. Now I usually don't use these lights. And as far as lanterns or lamps, lights, whatever go on these systems, I really prefer when they are on the back because I'm gonna be using it with the front facing me and then I can use the light to shine on the wall behind it and that creates a broad light in the room without it being directly in my eyes. We've got a normal 12 volt 10 amp DC port right here as well as a 100 watt USB-C right here and then two USB-A outlets right here. In typical Bluetti fashion we've got all these rubberized covers over everything and we have two 110 120 volt ac outlets right here these are called nema 515 receptacles or nema 515 r's on the side here we have all of the inputs here is the dc or solar input it's going to be rated from 12 to 28 volts and up to 8 amps then we have the fuse and that grounding port right here. You can actually put a grounding screw. That's not very common to see on these systems. So that's pretty cool they included that. And then, like I said earlier, we have our wall charging port right here. It does have a wireless charging pad right on top, as well as a fold down carry handle that's very robust and comfortable. Now you may have already noticed that the screen is turned off. This is one of my biggest gripes of the system. So you have to push one of these buttons and it'll allow the screen to turn back on, but usually about 30 seconds later, the whole screen turns off. But I do like how these are illuminated right here, these buttons for the power, the DC and the AC, makes it easy to see from a distance if those things are turned on. So what we have in here is a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 403 watt hour battery with up to 200 watts of solar input. I have the app working as well. As far as apps go, the Bluettis have been some of the absolute easiest to connect to the app. There is a QR code on the sticker of every unit and all you have to do is download the Bluetti app, log in, yes you do have to create an account, and then you scan the QR code on the system, and then you get the guides to connect it to your phone through the Wi-Fi. And I've got the AC60 right here, and I can see that the AC outlet and the DC outlets are on. I can go ahead and turn those off right here. And now we can see that they are turned off here on the screen and with these buttons. Now, the app is quite limited. I'm not able to do very much with it. One of the biggest things that I would like to be able to do is adjust when the screen is on. So even if I go into the settings here, I can scroll through and notice that there is no option to be able to adjust the screen brightness, it's turn off time or anything like that. But there are these different options like AC eco mode to make sure it's running efficiently as well as when it shuts down, even the charging mode. Now the charging mode has standard turbo and silent. Now the turbo mode only works from zero to 80%. It's gonna charge at a faster rate than if you were using standard. But once it reaches 80%, it's gonna swap down automatically to standard or slow charge speed. And if I were to go to silent, then silent gives me the ability to reduce the charge speed so the fans stay even quieter. I usually like to keep mine on standard or on turbo. 
You can also check out the battery packs and it'll be able to sense through the battery ports here on the side how many batteries you have connected. Now I don't have a battery with me right now. I did have one that I could do some preliminary testing with, but I had to send that off elsewhere. And so I don't have it right now with this video. So the ultimate question always is, how does it work? And now I did a 0.2C discharge test on this unit right here, and I got an 86% efficiency. That means I got 86% out of the battery running a 0.2C discharge load. 0.2C just means I took 20% of the battery capacity, so about 80 watts, and I just discharged that for four or five hours to see how much capacity I got out of the battery, which is 86%. And then I needed to test its rechargeability. So I took it and did some major testing, I tested both by using the wall charger, as well as running a load while using the wall charger, as well as putting solar panels on it. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. We've got a varying watt output here on the AC60. I don't have the expansion battery on it. That is another option. I've got a 100 watt solar panel connected, currently at 21.7 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this in and see if we can get solar input at the same time, we had the solar icon turn on. Well, that was very impressive getting 92 watts here and almost 90 watts here because it's not very common for solar panels to get close to the rated output. This is why I like the rigid 100 and the rigid 200 panels from poweredportablesolar.com because they just perform so well. Yes, they do cost more, but it's for good reason. It's because you actually get good output from them. I'm gonna go ahead and swap this to a 200 watt panel and see what happens here. You can see we're at 19.6 watts. We'll go ahead and connect this and we'll see what happens. So this has a charge parameter of 12 to 28 volts and up to 8.5 amps. We're maxing out the amps here. So what I wanna do now, see the volts are really low and the amps are high. What we wanna do is actually have the highest amount of voltage with the lowest amount of amperage to get the most efficient input. I'm gonna try something else now. We're getting 143 watts off of a 200 watt solar panel, and that's because we've maxed out the amps. I'm gonna swap this to two 100 watt solar panels and see what happens. So we're squeezing in just a little bit more input because we're getting about the same amps, but a little bit more volts. So that's how we're going to optimize the input for this. So for the AC600, it performs better with two 100 watt panels rather than one 200 watt panel, but nearly the same. So I've got a large load on it. I'm gonna plug in the wall charger. And I wanna see what happens here, if this works, to have wall charging while outputting. I'm definitely outputting a lot of power and it's inputting a lot of power and it is truly functioning like a UPS here because I'm inputting more than what I'm outputting. It's erratic right now because I'm using this heat gun, which is not very smooth power. That's really cool that it's able to input more than what's going out, so that way it is always charging up. I definitely like that feature. So as you can see, it does okay with solar input. It definitely doesn't get anywhere near the 200 watts of rated solar input, which is a big downer for me, especially for the fact that I want the system to be able to recharge quickly while I'm using it. But the wall charging does work very well. So I could leave this plugged into a wall outlet, in the app set the AC outlets to never time out so they're always on and then I can connect a refrigerator or a sump pump or something like that to this so that way it's constantly running that device and then if my grid power ever goes off this will automatically take over and continue running that for as long as the batteries can last. So I think that's where it really shines is a very portable lightweight UPS system. It's also great for laptops and drones and DC fridges and all sorts of lightweight charging needs like that, especially for cordless tools. This would be a huge benefit to have on a job site where you're running a bunch of cordless tools. It definitely performed very well and it's on par with everything Bluetti makes as far as inverter efficiency, how much you're gonna get out of the battery, cool expandability, the app works good. I do like the Bluetti products. However, their customer service needs to be better. And I know that's something that they are directly working on. I know they're hiring more people and doing more training with them. So hopefully over the coming months, we see their customer service get much better. Now for any discounts or coupons that I'm able to get you guys, I'll have that in the description down below. Bottom line is I think this is a great system as a UPS and portable backup power, but it's obviously not going to be big enough for emergency backup power to run a lot of essential items like fridge, freezers, Wi-Fi, TV, and those kinds of things. It's capable of running them, but it's not capable of running them for a very long time because it doesn't have enough solar input and even enough battery expandability. It should really be focused on as a portable, lightweight power system for small devices 
and or use it as a UPS. Those are my thoughts. I really do like it. Links down below. Guys, prepare for self-rescue. See y'all in the next one.